Hello, I'm Andrew Pritchard, and thank you for watching today's Corn Belt Regional Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. As we talk about the storylines across the Corn Belt for the next five to seven days, well, MCS activity continues with thunderstorm clusters developing over the northern plains, tracking into the upper Midwest, and at times diving southward across parts of the eastern Corn Belt. Thunderstorm activity is going to continue to increase over the central and eastern Corn Belt after a, a break for some, of course, some of those thunderstorm clusters diving into parts of Illinois and Indiana over the weekend and early this week, but it does look like as we head into the holiday weekend and into the early part of next week, thunderstorm activity begins to increase again in a more widespread manner across, again, the central and the eastern Corn Belt, including the already active northern plains. A cool down looming here in maybe the next seven to ten days as we get through the holiday weekend, we're going to get a, a slow cooling trend across the, uh, the Midwest where we're seeing our first taste of summer now, first taste of real summer heat, and it does look like maybe the clock is ticking on that. Again, talking about maybe a slow cool down as we head into the next 7 to 10 days. So we look at the last 48 hours of precipitation. Again, we've seen uh, thunderstorm con uh, clusters continue to develop across parts of the northern plains, tracking eastward into uh, parts of the upper Midwest. And then we saw several thunderstorm clusters diving to the south-southeast across parts of Illinois, Indiana, and then isolated thunderstorm activity across the Mid-South, including Kentucky and Tennessee as well, over the last 48 hours. We'll go ahead and loop the radar here going back a couple of days. We're going to take a look at this thunderstorm cluster that dove south out of the upper Midwest into parts of Illinois and Indiana on Sunday afternoon, producing widespread wind damage in, in parts of Wisconsin and Illinois as it did so. We'll let this restart one more time here. We're seeing what's going on this morning. Uh, but let's again, we'll go back to Sunday and watch up here for this thunderstorm cluster diving out of Minnesota into Wisconsin down across parts of Illinois and Indiana and then dying in parts of Kentucky. Now here's what we have going on uh, this morning as we have thunderstorm clusters again across parts of the Central Plains into the upper Midwest. But uh, that particular cluster of thunderstorms on Sunday that dove into parts of Illinois and Indiana produced uh, damaging winds in parts of eastern Illinois. This is some video that I shot that is playing uh, really uh, in a jerky manner here showing some of the high winds with some small hail that fell across parts of eastern Illinois uh, in Champaign County here where our office is located and then flooded some of the roadways. And then uh, I've got a crop of sweet corn growing in our backyard that was completely flattened by this uh, thunderstorm complex as well. So uh, just a problematic year overall, even for the backyard gardener here. This is playing a little bit more smoothly, some severe winds, some, some small hail falling in there. And then of course the flooded roadways back in Champaign-Urbana where our, uh, our home office is located. Over the next three days, our severe weather outlook here, we've got a, a slight risk for severe storms across parts of uh, North and South Dakota. This would be today, Tuesday. A marginal risk across parts of the Central Plains into uh, parts of the, the Central and Eastern Corn Belt here, parts of the Great Lakes. As we talk about the day on Wednesday here, another marginal risk across parts of the Central and Eastern Corn Belt, a marginal risk across the Northern Plains. And then as we get into the day on Thursday here, the 4th of July, we've got a marginal risk across again parts of the Northern Plains. And then still expecting, uh, you know, at least isolated thunderstorm activity across the entire Corn Belt for the 4th of July holiday. The high, res re high Resolution Rapid Refresh, or HER, as we like to call it here, uh, shows us over the next 24 hours or so uh, what we expect for the afternoon on Tuesday, which is, again, the redevelopment of, of isolated to scattered thunderstorms across a big part of the central and eastern Corn Belt. I'll go ahead and play it one more time. Again, we expect the more organized uh, threat for severe thunderstorms to be located here over the northern plains, parts of North and South Dakota. Uh, but as I play this again, watch basically the entire... Uh, central and eastern Corn Belt here from Nebraska and Kansas across Iowa, Missouri, parts of Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio uh, begin to light up with these isolated thunderstorms with the, the peak heating of the afternoon. We'll play this one more time. Again, these are your pop-up thunderstorms. They're slow moving. They, they're often not severe, but they can produce some locally heavy rainfall. And it's a situation, again, with low wind shear, they, they're slow moving. And this is where we end up with situations where perhaps your field picks up an inch and a half of rain from one of these slow moving storms and two miles down the road, uh, everything is completely dry. So problematic for some, others will remain dry here with a pattern like this. Uh, but as we head through the next 60 hours, again, looking at the high resolution rapid or the high resolution NAM model, now we're switching over, uh, looking at instability on the, on the left and then the, uh, the forecast radar on the right. And what you're gonna see is every day uh, during the peak heating, we're gonna be very unstable across the central US and thunderstorms just love to erupt there in that unstable air mass. It doesn't take much to kick them off. So we'll play this out each afternoon. You see the instability build, and you see thunderstorms develop on the right. And then even when you're looking at the instability plot on the left, you can see those thunderstorms develop and kind of eat up that instability uh, and kind of squash that with the rain-cooled air that comes out of that. But 
again, you know, it, it's hard to pinpoint well in advance where exactly these thunderstorm clusters are going to develop. Uh, but we know that they will develop. They'll be slow moving in nature. And, and it's a situation, again, where some get soaked and others remain dry. We'll kind of time this out for you over the next couple of days. Again, Tuesday, you know, we're expecting uh, more focused severe weather over parts of North and South Dakota. But then the entire Central and Eastern Corn Belt expected to light up here with these isolated thunderstorms as we head through Tuesday afternoon and evening. As we get into the day on Wednesday, again, very unstable across the entire, uh, entire Corn Belt here, especially the Central and Eastern Corn Belt. Expecting another day of, uh, of isolated, scattered thunderstorms developing anywhere from the central plains into the eastern corn belt with another focused severe weather threat in the northern plains. And then those continue to die out during the overnight hours. Wake up on Thursday, we'll be doing the same thing, talking about thunderstorm clusters possibly across the central and eastern corn belt uh, with a severe weather threat over parts of the northern plains. Taking a look at the high resolution NAM model, the precipitation forecast, this really shows the pattern well. Again, as this ends here, looking at the, the total accumulated rain forecast through 2 p.m., knowing what we know here that the, the, the forecast models aren't going to nail these heavy corridors, nail these thunderstorm clusters uh, with 100% with precision, we can pick up on the pattern here with organized severe storms possible over the Dakotas. And then slow moving, isolated thunderstorms. I don't know why I'm drawing an arrow over a, or an oval because it's the entire central and eastern corn belt that really runs the risk here as we go through Tuesday all the way through Thursday and beyond that into the weekend, which we'll take a look at here. So where are we going? As we start the day on Tuesday right now, looking at the jet stream, we've got kind of a broad ridge over the central US, and that's what's allowed us to warm up over the central and the, the eastern corn belt, getting our first taste of summer across the Midwest. That's what allows for those ridge riding thunderstorms uh, up in, in, the, in the northern plains into the Great Lakes, and then the, uh, the scattered th thunderstorms developing underneath that ridge uh, during the peak heating of the afternoon. As we go through, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do this over time. We're going to get the loop playing, and then I'll pause it here. Over the next seven days or so, we go through a bit of a transition phase where, uh, you know, we're not necessarily under a, a major ridge, but we're not seeing any troughs push in either. We've got kind of this flat flow across the, the northern plains in the upper Midwest uh, with little disturbances running along uh, within that flow. And again, with a, an unstable air mass, uh, and, and kind of zonal flow or, or a subtle ridge with little perturbations within that, that's what keeps the chance for those thunderstorm clusters in the forecast across uh, essentially the entire Corn Belt over the next five to seven days. It's as we get into next week, uh, especially mid to late next week, that we really start to see the pattern uh, start to uh, uh, transform here. As we see this ridge still kind of focused over the, the central U.S., uh, begin to be squashed by a, a deepening trough over the northern plains. Again, we're getting into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And by the time we get to the end of next week, uh, looking at probably having a, a northwest flow uh, in, with a, 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 a trough over the, the Great Lakes in the eastern United States. So uh, northwest flow across the, the Corn Belt here, that's going to be a cooler pattern, uh, but it's also going to be a pattern that does keep the chance for thunderstorm clusters across the, the entire Corn Belt from the northern plains, especially into parts of the central uh, Corn Belt here. Talking about parts of, you know, a corridor from the Dakotas down to Illinois and Indiana, I would say, going to keep the, the thunderstorms in the forecast there, even as we head into the late part of next week. Looking at the European uh, ensemble here, uh, the total uh, precipitation anomaly here, taking us through the holiday weekend. So over the next six days or so, getting us into Monday, again, highlighting this corridor here, covering about the entire Corn Belt uh, from the Dakotas into the Eastern Corn Belt, uh, keeping the, the, the forecast for thunderstorms, uh, thunderstorm activity uh, you know, prominently across the region. Looking at the GFS ensemble model, the 15-day forecast, we're taking it a bit further. You see the same corridor highlighted. Again, it's the essentially uh, the entire Corn Belt from, from the Dakotas into parts of Illinois and Indiana and even Ohio there, uh, picking up on higher than normal precipitation forecast over the next 15 days from the GFS model. And again, we'll just loop the instability forecast here from the European model. And each afternoon, you're seeing a, a plenty unstable air mass across the Corn Belt here, and that's why we have to keep the thunderstorms in the forecast. It just doesn't take much uh, when we've got instability values uh, that are top in the top levels of the chart here is it's just, you know, uh, we get the pop-up thunderstorms, uh, we get sometimes a little perturbation within the flow, a little shortwave trough, perhaps it's, you know, a decaying area of thunderstorms from the night before that flares back up as it taps into that atmosphere or that, that unstable atmosphere uh, during the afternoon the, the, the next day. It's just there's any number of potential triggers when we've got an, an unstable air mass like this across the Corn Belt. Taking a look at the, the 12 hourly uh, accumulated precipitation, so precip accumulation every 12 hours, and we'll just kind of uh, again take a look at the pattern here as we head through the next four or five days. 
you're seeing uh, thunderstorm clusters developing over the Dakotas, but then you're also seeing afternoon thunderstorms develop again in, in scattered to isolated nature across a huge chunk of the Corn Belt from the Dakotas all the way to the Eastern Corn Belt. We're talking about here, we're in Friday, getting into Saturday and Sunday. And then as we get into the early part of the next week, it does look like maybe a, a small pause here Monday and Tuesday of next week for parts of the Eastern Corn Belt, but that's so far off into the future and it seems like such a narrow window that I'm not gonna necessarily call it a shutdown because you know, we're looking at Tuesday right now, this is where I'm ending this loop and we're already getting, uh, as that trough begins to build into parts of the Northern Plains and then eventually a bigger chunk of the Midwest midweek next week, we're going to start to see an increase in those thunderstorm clusters and so perhaps shifting away from these pop-up storms across the central and eastern corn belt and pivoting to more organized thunderstorm activity and a big reason for that is wind shear this is a bit of a complicated looking map but we're looking at uh, wind shear within the atmosphere when we want organized severe weather we want to talk about values here in that 30 to 50 uh, knot range or, or higher than that and as we start this loop here tuesday the the, the higher wind shear values across the northern plains uh, into the Great Lakes and that's why you know as we talk about the next three to four days getting into the weekend the higher threat for organized severe storms is across the Dakotas parts of the northern Corn Belt as we play this out though getting into the the middle uh, the early to middle part of next week as the jet stream begins to kind of flatten out sink south and then we shift over to a, a regime with northwest flow over the the Corn Belt and we start to talk about higher values of wind shear here and that could mean uh, as we get into next week, talking about perhaps an increase in severe weather, an increase in those uh, those MCSs, those squall lines and bow echoes, much like we saw over the last seven to ten days across the northern plains, parts of the upper Midwest, and parts of the eastern Corn Belt. So pop-up thunderstorms widespread over the next four to five days, and then as we head into next week, possibly we're looking likely that we'll shift over to a, a northwest flow regime, which could mean an increase in more organized thunderstorm activity from the northern plains to the central and eastern Corn Belt. We'll flip over, we'll talk about temperatures just briefly. You know, I teased a bit of a cool down. It is gonna be a slow cool down, certainly as we go through the holiday weekend, remaining warm and muggy for many across the Corn Belt. As we get into the six to 10 day, six to 10 day time frame here, as now we're talking about July uh, 8th through the 12th, flipping back to a more average pattern here as we slowly cool down. And then it's really as we get into uh, the 11 to 15 day time range. So talking about July 10th and beyond that, that's when it looks like we'll really start to flip back to a cooler pattern, a cooler and wetter pattern across a big chunk of the Corn Belt. Your high temperatures for the next five days, just to finish us out here. Remember, it is warm and muggy for the, for the rest of the, the holiday week here. High temperatures in the mid to upper 80s to the 90s across the Corn Belt. Uh, a bit cooler off to the north for the day on Wednesday. High temperatures in the 70s there where we got some cloud and rain activity going on. Cooler temperatures uh, remaining over the north for the 4th of J July holiday. Uh, your high temperatures elsewhere across a big chunk of the Corn Belt in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees for the 4th of July. July 5th, and then we will finish here with Saturday. You notice this slowly sagging boundary here where we're just slowly cooling off, and that's what I mean about this slow transition back to a, a cooler and wetter pattern across the Corn Belt. It's not as if a, a big front's going to come screaming through and cool us down in one day. Uh, like we see in the spring sometimes, it's going to be a slow transition to a different pattern. As always, Eric Snodgrass will have an in-depth uh, look at the evolution of the next one to two weeks in our Thursday morning ag forecast video. And I'll check in with the next Corn Belt regional update midday on Friday. Have a great day.